Hello and welcome everybody to game two of Terran vs. Dark Force from the G4 StarCraft II Pro-Am Tournament. My name is Glitch and spawning here in the 3 o'clock position as the Red Terran on Shattered Temple, we have Incredible Miracles, Terran. Spawning here in the 8 o'clock position as the Blue Zerg, we have Alternate Attacks, Dark Force. As I said, this is going to be game two of a best of five, and uh, Dark Force was able to take game one on Zelnaga Caverns by just going for a very, very solid macro style. As I said in game one, Dark Force is well known for being a very, very patient player, known for being very, very patient in uh, dealing with aggression and being aggressive on his own. Uh, Terran tried to be very, very aggressive in game one, tried to go for a lot of early game aggression, tried to get as much damage as he could in the early game, but Dark Force was just too well prepared for it, was able to smash all the early aggression from Terran, and uh, Terran really used a lot of resources to get that early aggression going, so... Uh, after that point, uh, Dark Force pretty much just kept a solid lead and was able to play a solid macro game, and uh, just as Terran tried to expand, Dark Force just went for a very, very nicely timed attack and was able to just overwhelm the forces of Terran, instantly destroying tons of workers with a huge swell of uh, Zerglings, Banelings, and Mutalisks. So here in game two, we're going to see if Terran is going to be able to take his revenge and get a little bit of revenge on Dark Force for taking that win in game one and uh, see if he can't do some more damage. Is he going to be going for that aggressive style? So far we do have a barracks down here for Terran. We see a factory now coming down as well as a reactor going up on this barracks. We can only imagine that uh, he's going to be lifting this barracks and placing that factory down on that reactor so he can produce some Hellions here and that is exactly what we are seeing him do as two Hellions are now being prepared. Do we have a starport going down yet? Are we going to be able to see some of that early elevator drop style from Terran this game? Looks like not quite yet. We do have a command center going down so it looks like Terran's going to be going for a little bit more of a macro style of game this time. Uh, Dark Force, of course, prepared for those Hellions, was able to scout that factory as well as that reactor. Going to be throwing down some spine crawlers here to try to deal with those Hellions as they move across the map. In the meantime, producing some links because he knows that there is some Hellion aggression coming here and he wants to be able to deal with it the best way uh, possible. He does have a queen here on the ramp to be able to prevent those Hellions from getting up too easily and it looks like Terran's just going to be poking in and pulling right back as uh, there are a lot of defenses there for Dark Force. Nice scout there by Dark Force. We do once again have that Infernal Pre-Igniter. That is going to be the Blue Flame Hellion upgrade here coming in for Terran. And it looks like just as he is expanding, uh, Dark Force moves in with this one Overlord, is able to see that Command Center, knows exactly that uh, Terran is going to be trying to expand here. And what are we going to see here? I am hoping we're going to see a ton of drones here from Dark Force. And yes, indeed, you see that? There was all that idle larva. Dark Force waited until the moment he saw that Command Center. And as soon as he saw that Command Center, he said, you know what? If you have a Command Center, you can't have gotten a whole lot of uh, bear units early on and a whole lot of Hellions and could be attacking me with one giant one base push. So you know what? What am I going to do? I'm going to make a ton of drones and go for an economic style of play and uh, just defend a little bit. And that's exactly what we're seeing here from Dark Force. We're seeing a few Hellions come up here for now with uh, from Terran. He's pushing out with everything he's got right now, but Dark Force uh, in a pretty good spot right now with his macro. Doesn't have a whole lot of lings out at the moment, but he does have a spine crawler here, which is excessively good at holding off those Hellions, and he's trying to get a good surround with those lings. All the Hellions doing a good job of roasting down a bunch of those lings. A ton of lings falling there to the forces of Terran. Terran now coming in, trying to poke at the spine crawler as much as he can. Some Bane lings now being morphed in here for Dark Force. Queens now moving in to try to deal as much damage as they can. All three queens moving in. Nice pullback there by Dark Horse as he was able to save that one queen, but the queen finally does go down. Will the other queen go down? No, the other queen does manage to save alive, so Dark Horse is still going to have enough queens to be able to uh, inject both of his hatcheries constantly. Lair Tech is now up for Dark Force, and so a nice little defense there from Dark Force. Will he be able to take this game again like he did in game one by just defending nicely and uh, continuing to let his opponent be aggressive and using his defender's advantage to, uh, to win this uh, game? As uh, if you don't already know what that defender's advantage is, of course the defender's advantage is, well, if you're defending, you are making units exactly where the battle is happening. There is no travel time. Your units don't have to be walking all the way across the map to try to come to the battle. So you can get a lot more units to the fight ridiculously fast. And uh, 
So yeah, that, that's that's defender's advantage for you. We do have a medevac here poking around for Terran, trying to get in as best he can. He's can, trying to continue to be aggressive as he can, but Dark Force, just with these well-placed overlords all around his base, is able to see everything that's going on here. Drop gonna go down behind the main. He's actually gonna pick up a few drone kills there, but it looks like that push is gonna be uh, dropped there by that queen. Will that queen be able to take out that medevac? That medevac survived with six hit points, and it looks like it is gonna just survive by the skin of its teeth there. In the meantime, Terran's gonna try to push in here at the front, but there's really not a whole lot of opportunity to do so as there are a ton of lings here for Dark Force. Looks like he's gonna be getting ready to take his third as he is just now just starting to take down those destructible rocks. Terran thinking the same as he's now throwing down another command center, and uh, destructible rocks still up here for Terran. If we check out that worker count right now, we can see that Zerg is doing exactly what Zerg players love to do. He's getting up a ton of harvesters, 42 to 55 harvesters right now. Some Hellions out on the field instantly getting taken out by those Banelings. Such nice surround there by those Zerglings. Banelings coming in to deal the damage. Nice defense here by Dark Force. Such solid defense over and over and over from Dark Force. I can't believe how good his defense is right now, especially considering the small amount of map control he he has. If we check out uh, the view, the vision right now of uh, Dark Force, Dark Force is scouting his own base right now. If you check out this mini-map, you can see that he's got vision down here. He's scouting this corner for drops. He's going to scout up here for drops as well, but he has no sight in the middle. He does not know when attacks are coming. He is purely relying on the forces that he has. He's depending on the fact that he can build a lot of forces quite quickly, and he's just relying on the forces he has for defense. We do now see Destructible Rocks going down for both players, Dark Force and Terran, both looking to take their gold expansion here pretty soon. Command Center now coming up here for Dark Force being morphed, or for uh, Terran rather, morphing that into an orbital command. In the base of Terran, we do now see there are a ton of barracks up right now. We have four reactor barracks and one with a tech lab. Combat shield just now on the way. Stim, I believe, is already up. Yes, Stim is up. Mutilus now poking into the base here for Dark Force. Dark Force, I think, was able to see most of the tech there from Terran. Wasn't able to see the high barracks count, but was able to, uh, I think he can estimate that from the number of Marines he's been seeing out of Dark Force. Terran now doing a nice little transition here into Siege Tanks. These Siege Tanks obviously do have that Siege Mode upgrade, and uh, Ling's being placed now around the map for Terran, wants to be sure, or for Dark Force, rather, so that he can scout the uh, forces of his opponent wants to know exactly when he's expanding. Is just now moving in, seeing that expansion go down. I think, pretty sure he saw it flying in midair, so he knows that that expansion is going down. And it looks like he's going to be using this as the perfect moment to attack. Will this work as it did in game one? In game one, we did see just as Terran started to take his third. That is exactly when Dark Force decided to be aggressive. And uh, but Dark Force. Uh, this game has not quite taken out as much. Uh, Terran committed much, much more in game one to his aggression and lost a lot of units to that early aggression. In this game, he hasn't lost quite so much, so uh, he is going to be in a much better place as he takes this third as he, than he was in game one. But uh, Dark Force, of course, not going completely all in here if he does decide to be aggressive. He did, we see him poked, we see him poked at the front, saw that there were tons of Marines out here and said, you know what? I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna risk it and just pull back. This is that safe style of play that I was talking about that we have been seeing from Dark Force uh, a lot in tournaments and other such things. Just being very, very patient, poking in with these mutilists, moved in with this big attack force. Saw that you know what? I'm gonna lose a lot of forces if I move in with all these forces. Uh, I'm gonna lose a lot of forces if I move in with my army. So you know what? I'm gonna sit back. I'm gonna continue to macro more. I'm gonna continue to get mutilists and continue to be very aggressive. And then I'm just gonna sit back and macro up an army and guarantee my win later. I know that I'm beating uh, Terran right now in bases. I've got this gold expansion up. I've got this back expansion up. And uh, I'm scouting your other expansions to make sure that there are no secret expansions going on. And here, look, he's even coming down here right now just to check and be sure that there is no expansion here at this lower base for Terran. Such smart, logical play here from Dark Force. We do have a drop moving around the map here for Terran. Terran is going to be coming around. And what is that we see? Oh, it's my favorite Terran building ever, the Sensor Tower. Such a good structure. I always have to point it out whenever I see one of those go up because it's just so smart, especially against Zerg, who loves to go for counterattacks. A lot of Zergs love to go for a counterattack style of play where they uh, attack in multiple directions at once. And uh, Terran knows that, so he, what is he doing? He's throwing down a sensor tower so he can better have map control so that he can know exactly when these things are coming. Now, we do have a well-placed overlord here for Dark Force, so will he be able to be aware of this drop? Will that 
Spine Brawler be up in time? No, we are not going to see that Spine Brawler up in time. And Dark Force forced to pull a lot of drones off the line. Lots of Zerg down coming in to clean up this attack. Banelings are going to be able to finish off that attack. Definitely for uh, Terran, but Terran really just not dealing that much damage. Oh no, I'm missing a big attack here going on in the middle. We are going to back that up, ladies and gentlemen, because that is way too big of a battle to miss here. Terran now besieged up all in the middle of the map. All these forces now coming down. Lots of Banelings here for Dark Force. All going to be connecting, forcing all those Marines back while the Siege Tanks just clean up uh, all those, all the uh, Mutalisks rather, clean up those siege tanks there from Terran. So much damage there uh, dealt by Dark Force. Dark Force currently sitting at 180 food to the 140 food of Terran. Terran looks like he is not quite getting ready to take a third. Looks like he's going to try to win this on this uh, big push. He's coming out with another big force. I don't know about this attack here from Terran. He saw that there were still a lot of, of Zerglings and a lot of Bailings out here for Dark Force. And in the meantime, the Mulists are going to be attacking. He knows the forces of Terran are stuck out here in the middle of the map, so he's going to come in here, try to deal as much damage as he can to the tech structures of Dark Force, uh, of Terran, rather. And Terran now moving in with a big force of uh, Marines, trying to go around and poke and try to take out as much creep as he can. As we can see, all the creep is slowly receding, and uh, but Dark Force not minding too much as he is in the base of Terran, dealing a lot of damage. Not getting a lot of worker kills there, but he's doing a lot of damage to the tech, and he's forcing Terran to have to split his attention between all these different places. Thor is now out on the field for Terran, and this is going to help tremendously with those Mutalisks now, as the Mutalisk count is starting to get really, really high for Dark Force. And now Dark Force trying to poke around, trying to pick off any stray units as he can, but we've got units in good positions here. Some forces moving in for Dark Force, some Bailings coming in, able to clean up all those Marines. Will they be able to pick off that Siege Tank? Yes, the Siege Tank goes down, and all the forces of Terran now stemming up, trying to deal as much damage as they can, but Dark Force just macroing so well right now. So many forces here for Dark Force as he's continuing to try to push in. Um, Dark Force is just going to have a lot of Lings and Banelings ready here to deal with the forces of Terran. Investors now out on the field as well. These Investors do have enough for Fungal Growth and that is exactly what we're seeing here. One not so nice Fungal Growth there going down for Dark Force. Able to catch a few Marines. He really needs to catch a lot of Marines in those Fungal Growths and then move in with those Banelings and uh, really clean him up there if he wants to do a lot of damage. A little bit of miscontrol there from Dark Force as he does lose some uh, Marines careless or some Mutalisks rather carelessly. There we go. Those are the Fungal Growths you want down. Uh, on his opponent's forces. All the Banelings now moving in, getting some good kills here. Terran, though, macroing. Holy cow, he's actually macroing ridiculously well. 190 food to the 187 food of Dark Force. Dark Force trying to poke in wherever he can to try to deal uh, as much damage as he can before the big attack. And, oh no, a little bit of miscontrol there from Dark Force as all the Zerglings are caught off guard there. Nice fungal growth there. Finally goes down for Dark Force, able to land an excellent fungal growth. A lot of forces there take a lot of damage there. Going to use a lot of energy there on those medevacs to heal those forces up. In the meantime, all the forces uh, coming in with the, uh, not counterattack, but, uh, oh my god, I can't remember the word. What's the word for when your opponent goes for a flank? Flank, that's the word I was looking for. One big flank there from Dark Force, able to take out a lot of siege tanks from Terran. And we are now seeing the forces of Dark Force now move in. Broodlords now on the field here for uh, Dark Force. Dark Force able to get quite in a good food lead right now. 169 food to the 144 of Terran, and more forces are currently continuing to be streamed in here from Dark Force. But the forces of Terran are moving in. The siege tanks are moving up, and he's continuing to get closer and closer. These Marines caught a little bit caught out of position there, as they were a little bit far away from their siege tanks there. But uh, man, Dark Force still doing an amazing job of now starting to push back with these broodlords. These are going to allow him to start pushing this force of Terran back towards his base, and that's exactly what we're seeing here as these broodlords are moving in. They're going to start to deal damage to those Marines while the siege tanks start shooting their own Marines. Such good play here by Dark Force. Good positioning here of these broodlords. Trying not to be uh, caught out of position. Doesn't want his forces out in the middle of the map where these Marines will be able to catch them. And Bungle Growth going down on those Marines as well. I apologize that I'm just speeding this up. We are about to hit that 15 minute mark and I do want to squeeze this into one 15 minute game. The forces of Dark Force continuing to come out. More Broodlords on the field and finally the forces of Terran are going to be forced back. Some drop plays going on there by Terran. Sorry I wasn't able to catch that because there was a lot of action going on there in the middle. Drops able to deal some damage. Wasn't able to take out that hatchery though and looks like Terran's going to continue to try to be aggressive in here as he is now moving in with a lot of forces but the Broodlord count here is getting ridiculously high as well as the Infestor count. They're all moving in now. So much damage being dealt to those siege tanks. Infestor's now moving in. Bungle Growth's going down on those Marines catching him just a little bit out of position. Broodlord's now moving in. So much damage being dealt forcing that siege tank to deal damage to his own Marines and just so much damage here being dealt 
by Dark Force being so, so patient. And the GG from Terran, that means that Dark Force has taken game two. Will he be able to take this best of five in game three? We will find out in just a moment, so do not move a muscle. 